Hey everybody, welcome back to this month's Tech Talk. Thanks so much for joining. My name is Brad Monday. I'm head of machine learning and engineering here at Modsy. And in today's Tech Talk, we're gonna explore a few different techniques to speed up your machine learning models in production. Before we dive in, just two very quick housekeeping items. Like many of our Tech Talks, today's is part talk, part code demo. And as always, the code that we'll reference in today's talk will be available on our GitHub page. So make sure you check out the link uh, that will be posted in the description of this YouTube video and feel free to follow along at your own leisure. The second thing that I'd like to just mention is if you find this useful and you want to stay up to date with the latest trends in model ops and, and ML ops, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Um, you know, we frequently release new videos, blogs, content, and we're really excited about what's coming in the next couple months. Okay, let's get started. Now, speed and efficiency are the name of the game when it comes to production machine learning. There's no doubt about that. But why is it? Some of these answers that I put together might seem obvious, but I think it's important to properly set the stage before we dive into some of the techniques themselves. And the first is that most real world applications require fast inference, it's not an option. Um, let's take self-driving cars as a great example. Built into these cars are real-time object detection algorithms that in many cases prevent the cars operationally from running through red lights, identifying stop signs, avoiding hitting pedestrians or other unexpected obstacles in the road. And so even in these examples, a few milliseconds can lead to catastrophic results if inference is not complete fast enough. On the same example of self-driving cars, another reason this is important is that fast inference can enable more sophisticated and complex applications. Within self-driving cars, there are many different algorithms, in some cases working together or in an ensembled approach to make operational decisions for that vehicle. So the next reason it's important to consider machine learning model inference speeds is that typically resource footprints and inference times can go hand in hand. In some cases, by reducing latency, we can also reduce the memory or RAM and power consumption um, on any given device, whether that's an edge device, an embedded device, or some cloud resource, and ultimately uncover some additional cost saving measures, which can be really important and significant. And all this is to say high latency and the corresponding risks that come with high latency are preventable. And it's important to consider these factors, these techniques before deploying a model to your production application. Finally, slow models are not fun. Take from us, we've experienced this the hard way. And as a result, have put a lot of time, dedication and resources into making sure we are building a platform that enables high performance AI powered systems. So with this context in mind, Let's now dive in and discuss the four techniques we're going to explore today to make your machine learning models run faster. The first technique has to do with the hardware on which these models will be executed on. And a common question is, are GPUs faster at processing data than CPUs are? Well, this is a loaded question and kind of tricky to answer, but the short answer I'll give is not always. Um, but most oftentimes, yes, when we're talking about machine learning and deep learning and processing. And the reason for that is that GPUs excel when a task can be parallelized. The reason for this is that GPUs have far more processor cores, as we see in this picture right here, than CPUs do. They were designed to accelerate parallel computing. This can particularly come in handy when dealing with a deep neural network, especially when we're processing imagery or video. So even though that you typically hear of GPUs as accelerating and speeding up training time for these models, it can also play a large role in accelerating inference times as well. But like any decision you make, there are trade-offs that come with this one. Now, for one, GPUs are expensive to acquire and also to run. And they also, in some cases, require extra software in order to leverage it, in order to be able to take advantage of that GPU. Okay, so another technique that we'll explore today is batch processing. Now, typically when you hear batch processing, it's the conversation comparing batch processing to real-time or online processing or inferencing. And that typically refers to the type of batch processing where you get a, a dump of new data once a week, once a month, and process all that data at one time through your models, where real-time is not, you know, doesn't matter. The results of those predictions would be fed into some downstream analysis. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is the idea of saturating a GPU. So we talked about switching from CPU to GPU hardware, and if that is a consideration, it only really makes sense to do so if you can take advantage of the GPU, right? Because sending a single input through a GPU, while it will accelerate inference slightly, doesn't take advantage of the GPU for what it's good for. So if we look at this diagram right here, we see the top line here of a GPU not being utilized at all versus the bottom one um, being highly utilized. So the idea that we can still accelerate inference overall by increasing our throughput and taking advantage of the GPU for what it's good at, and that is processing 
data in parallel. The next technique that we'll consider and talk about is splitting up all the different tasks that go into a machine learning inference process. So when we talk about production, we often talk about containers, servers, APIs, things like that. Um, and to truly operationalize models, there are several factors of the machine learning inference process that we need to consider. Those being pre and post processing of data, any dependencies that are required, the model weights file or multiple files in some cases, and then the inference process itself. And so one way to go about this is to simply package all that up in a single container, throw a web server in there, expose it as a microservice, and then you can access that via API. And that's a great way to do it. But another consideration, if you need to find ways to decrease your, your inference latency, is to split these processes up. So if, as I show this diagram here, I pulled this from KServe. If you look at the, the right side of this diagram, specifically those two green boxes, we see one that's called a transformer, as they call it, which can take care of all of the pre and post processing, and then the predictor itself. So imagine those being two separate containers in production. Uh, the idea being the, the only things going into the predictor are the tensors itself. In other words, let's say images, for example, that have been read in, they have been converted to tensors, they've been transformed based on what the model expects so that inference can happen very rapidly. Now, a final technique that we will consider and explore today is model optimization and compilation. I'll just note quickly, we're only scratching the surface today and we're gonna have a whole no another talk um, dedicated specifically to these two topics where we'll dive much deeper and expand on this because there are a lot of great techniques out there. There are a lot of open source tools, all of which we'll explore. So make sure you stay tuned in the next couple months for that talk. So model optimization and, and compilation are some techniques that can be super effective, but there is an important trade-off to consider, and that is accuracy versus speed. Depending on your use case, depending on what's required, just make sure that you're considering that trade-off. And so, you know, some of the common considerations and techniques that we may hear of, model optimization, quantization, and pruning are different model minifying techniques, neural architecture search, allows you to search for different types of neural networks that with different combinations of parameters can achieve you know, both your performance expectations from an accuracy and metric standpoint, but also inference expectations. And then finally, activation statistics as a key parameter when training models. And then when we're talking about model compilation, we're talking about ways to optimize the way in which we compile models before being able to execute them. And so some, in, some key considerations there are the target hardware that you're anticipating running your model on, any model frameworks you're working with, any specific runtimes, and then ease of use. So these are the four techniques that we'll explore in today's talk. Let's now jump over to a quick demo and see what they look like in action and see how much time that they shave off of our machine learning inferencing times. Okay, so on my screen, I've opened a Jupyter Notebook just to show you the model and the, the example image that we'll be working with today to test the different techniques that we've just discussed. We're working with a PyTorch MobileNet V3 model. It's an image segmentation model, and we will be using this picture of a dog to pass through the several variations of this MobileNet model. Again, those variations defined by the techniques that we discussed today that we've implemented in the code that you can check out yourself. And then what I've done is I've created several variations, again, with those techniques we discussed implemented, and then I've aggregated them into a Python script that we can use for performance testing. So what you see here is a terminal on my screen that I'll run this Python script from. And to do so, I need to pass through two command line flags. We'll notice that I'm running my script. Um, we can pass through the number of inputs we'd like to test or a particular variation of the model we're working with. In this case, we'll just you do 100 for the, the purpose of this demo. And then we have this mode flag. Um, so we'll start with CPU. And what we see here is the test has started. We're running in CPU mode in 100 inputs. Now, the CPU mode is just that vanilla model, the PyTorch model as is running on the CPU architecture. Um, and we'll consider this to be our baseline that we'll then compare the several variations against. So our baseline is about eight images per second as throughput. Okay, now for my first comparison test here, I'll go slightly out of order. And I will run the optimized mode. The reason I'm doing that is because what we actually did for the optimized mode is we used a package developed by Intel called OpenVINO IR format. It's a super easy to use package and it optimizes models for Intel specific hardware. Since I'm using an Intel CPU, I thought it'd be a, an easy implementation just to show an example here. So again, we're still on CPU and we see with just a couple lines of code, again, very straightforward implementation, we're seeing two and a half times increase in, in throughput from eight from our baseline to all the way to about 20 images per second. So that's a great start. 
Next, let's run the GPU mode. To be clear here, what we're doing is we're running 100 images through one by one, so no batching yet. In other words, we're not saturating the GPU as we discussed. And again, we see a noticeable change in throughput numbers, over four times the, the amount of our baseline. So that's a pretty promising increase. Okay, moving on, let's test out the batch mode. So as a reminder, this is also using the GPU, but it, now it's just sending the entire batch of 100 images through the model at one time. There were some assumptions made doing this test because we just passed through the, the batch size of n inputs, which is not really conventional, but for the purpose of this demo, it will work. And again, we see an even larger throughput. So we're, we're gradually increasing here. And finally, let's test out the split mode, which is only recording the time it takes to perform inference, as I mentioned. So in production, this simulates each task in the inference process, as we mentioned, remember, pre-processing, post-processing inference, separated into their own containers. And yet again, we see an increase for a final throughput of these quick experiments of about 55 images per second. It's about a 7x increase from our baseline. So if you think this is interesting, I would really encourage you to check out the code, see how easy these implementations are, and start experimenting with your own models. So there you have it. In this tech talk, we discussed and demonstrated four simple techniques that you can explore to decrease your machine learning inferencing times. But remember, it's crucial to consider the trade-offs that come with each of these decisions. However, once you make the decision that's right for you, you will be able to reduce latency, as a result, mitigate more risk, and ultimately build more performant AI-powered applications. Thanks for listening.